Did that for the morning to you, laddies. It's me, and welcome to the Big 8 Zero. In the last episode, we took a break from the Great Nether Hub Project to do our big grand world tour. Thanks for all the love on the tour. It was amazing. Tour was great and all, but it's still January. Today, we'll be back at it with not one, not two, but three brand new Nether Hub farms. <sighs> three farms. That's going to like double the size of the Nether Hub. I, th I think we should stop wasting time. <laughs> we should probably do something. I got a plan today. I got a vision, too. You, you should be really, really proud of me because a plan and a vision, that's like all we need. Oh, and uh, and like the farms. I had the farm designs, too. I, I think I have every single piece of the puzzle for our builds today, guys. It's going to be amazing. In fact, I can see it now. Soon, so soon. We have the portal inside of this thing, and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think today's the day. Look, we're like lined up with the blaze farm. Oi, 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 what if, just, just maybe, yeah, take a seat for this. What if just maybe our good old friend, Iron Door, then apparently Brick, and, and the pressure plate too. What if we take our good old friend? Yeah, You can say we take our good old friend out back, if you know what I'm saying. Instead of being dead center, maybe we'll go ahead and splurge on the iron a little bit, and uh, put a door there, put a door on the other side, double door setup. That'd be pretty cool, right? All right. Then, considering the fact that we have a ladder that goes down to the bottom of the world, why not take this ladder and basically continue it all the way up to the top of the world to Y115, even with the nether hub floor? Then, well, then I can go up and down. That's how that works. All right, all right. I knew it was bound to happen eventually. No, no. Listen, jump. Listen, listen. No, no. You're done. You're done. I don't even have a flint and seal. Oh, wait. Do I have a flint and seal in here? I don't know. I don't think I have flint and seal. Listen, I know how you are. You're done. That's what I thought. You hide it from me. Look, I mean, <laughs> nothing could happen, right? I mean, I have feather falling boots. I'm just gonna reassure myself that nothing bad could happen up here at all. No. Oh, no way, no way. No spoilers at all for what I'm gonna do. Do I have the right pickaxe, though? <gasps> yes, I do. No spoilers at all, but this glowstone is gonna be perfect. I actually need glowstone for one of today's farms. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, and yeah, th thank you all so, so much. Glowstone. This is the best day ever. 113, 114, 115. Perfect. So now that we're up here at Y, 115, we've got this basically connected up to the nether hub. All I need to do from this point on is clear out a hallway, I, th I think. A hallway that goes like straight this way. Yes, yes, straight this way. And eventually I will find, I'll find everything I'm looking for and more. All right, so just a small walk over this way and voila, we land right here. Farm number one is gonna go right in this area right here. And then I was thinking farm number two could maybe be built in this hallway right here. I guess the only thing that I need to do is find the very, very back of this room right here, which seems to be this block. Yeah, 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 it's that, that block right there. Okay, maybe I can incorporate the lava in the hallway. That could be cool. And then think about the hallway a little bit, maybe like, I don't know, five wide, pretty major hallway. That could be cool too. Make it a little taller. Uh, and then a room. Room, room, room. Farm number one on the list today is what I would like to call a simple. Where's my crying obsidian? This isn't funny. I know I have it somewhere. We're, we're not doing this. Well, maybe this is why you shouldn't have two storage buildings with things inside of both. Mm hmm. All right, look, I know for a certain and sure fact at this point in the series, I've definitely gotten more than four crying obsidian. My only hope is this chest right here. Here. Yes, 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 you see exactly what I mean. Actually, a little bit of iron, too, or a lot of it, and even mycelium. 
Don't mind if I do. Farm numero uno today is what I would like to call a sophisticated yet elegant beauty. For this one, we need a respawn anchor. All right, so positioning, positioning. I was thinking maybe I would have this farm, this machine hang into the room a little bit. And speaking of the room, I cleared out a small space right here and then the hallway. I'm thinking the hallway is like basically set, but the room, definitely gonna need to push the ceiling up. Listen, I hate to do this to you, but you, you shot first. I'm sorry. Ah, hi, hi, I've got it. Okay, so we keep the room nice and small. Maybe something like this. And then somewhere on the back, we, we step it up again. And we put the room, or, or the farm, the, the actual machine, like sitting on a stage in the back of the room. Yeah, that'd be fancy. For this room, I'd like to switch it up a little bit. I'm still definitely thinking big pillars in here. Big pillars could be really, really cool. But I'm also thinking something completely different. For this little contraption machine beauty, here's what we've got. If anything bad ever does happen to us, which 1,510 days now, nothing has. I don't know if it ever will, but just in case, if anything bad ever does happen to us, this machine has us hooked up. It's an old but trusted beauty. I love this thing right here. And check this out. Over here inside of the dispenser, we fill it up with a little bit of glowstone. We get the machine started by adding glowstone to it and... This thing is never going to run out again. I press it right here, and the spawn is set right in the center of the nether hub now. Now, if anything bad happens to me, I pop up right in here. Respawning in the middle of the nether hub is great, really. It's going to be so much safer. But right now, respawning in the middle of the nether hub in a room that looks like... In a room that looks like how it does? Heh, <laughs> that's not so great. We got to level this thing up. Let's light that scent of the day, which today is a candle called matcha and bergamot. And let's do this. We gotta find some quartz, and we gotta do some building. I've been busy, <laughs> so busy, but I think I finally have something I'm ready to show off. Listen, I ask for no judgment at all on this build. This was the hardest part of the nether hub by far, but here we go. Here's what I come up with. Let me explain the vision before you judge, okay? So I was thinking like a fancy marble centerpiece where that respawn thing is. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's what I tried to build. I took a purple accent from the respawn anchor, put a little bit of amethyst in there and down here on the floor too. We're going to leave this wall like this today because I'm definitely planning on expanding the nether hub that way. So I don't want to do too much with it. And then the floor. So the floor, there's no way I will leave it like this. It's a monstrosity. Instead, what I was thinking I would do is I would dig this out like all the way so we can see down into the lower nether. And then I will come in here with a little bit of glass and maybe just like plain glass for now. Plain clear glass so I can like look down, right? I don't know. I wanted to give this room a really welcoming, like warm feeling because like... You know, something bad just happened if I pop up in this room, <laughs> you know? This room was hard. Seriously, I think I went through like three different iterations of the room. I would build it, then I just took it down all the way because I didn't like it. Also, the ceiling? I don't know. I think it's cool. So this room was a big challenge, but this room, no, it's not going to be a challenge at all. Lads, I've already got it. What we're going to do is basalt pillars right there. The basalt pillar is going to go up and it's going to wrap around. It's going to go straight across the ceiling. In this hallway, we're gonna have the ceiling be a little bit lower. I think it'll look pretty nice. Over here on this wall, we're gonna clear things out and make room for farm number two, a mushroom farm. You know, some mushrooms, they're absolutely a not essential nether farm, but I, I mean, look at the ground. I got this stuff growing everywhere. When I was thinking about the nether hub and cool things, maybe unique things that I could put inside of the nether hub that would like, I don't know, like maybe help me in a way later on. When I was thinking about those things, I thought about the mushrooms that I've had growing inside of the blaze farm for like the longest time. Maybe I can finally actually remove all of these from the blaze farm and just transport them up to the top of the nether. Now, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how I want to go about doing this one. I think I want to have more than like a section of five for each mushroom. Instead of just a puny, small, plain section of five, maybe what we do is we go ahead and make it a little bit deeper. We'll do like five and three. We'll go ahead and plant these mushrooms on mycelium because, I mean, this is kind of interesting, right? And then the rest of this room. 
so uh, over here I found a lava earlier I was thinking what I could do somehow is like open the lava up and let it like flow you know yeah, yeah it'll flow down and then maybe I can try and reconfigure what's going on back here I don't think this will cause any problems and let the lava flow like even wider you know I'm heavily heavily considering building some kind of auto smelter and throwing it inside of the nether hub as well because this whole time I've been working on this project look at this I've been smelting this stuff up nether bricks and maybe a little bit more specifically the nether brick fences this stuff will look great by my calculations here i should be able to remove that block too and that block and i i'll go ahead and touch the machine in a minute but we remove those blocks we put the nether brick fences right in here instead and then look at that we got that lava backdrop with the mushroom farm on the other side oh sweet break that out break that out and we should be good i think the farm should still be fine but I mean just in case you never know yeah, 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 okay. I did definitely know that's good Ceiling of this little bit always simple. It's so so simple a basalt randomized combination looks good We'll get some details in here details are always nice Oh, that's a good call. That's a really, really good call. Then we're going to farm the mushrooms. We're going to need to store the mushrooms. That was genius of you to just say. We'll make a barrel. So I was thinking maybe eventually I could come back in once I have like a proper nether wood farm. And maybe for the heck of it, put some of the nether wood uh, trap doors in here instead. But for now, I mean, I think this will be fine. This mycelium is going to spread, right? It should, right? Maybe it needs more light. Uh, uh, please spread. <laughs> uh, whoops. <laughs> and just a bit more building later, then we end up with a hallway that looks like this. I think I like it. I don't know if the soul sand on the floor is going to be like annoying or what, but I figure once we have soul speed, which will hopefully be soon, this shouldn't really be much of a problem. Also, my cellium update, it does spread. The light just wasn't good enough right there. For now, I think we'll just put it back though, let the mycelium fill in, then I'll move it over, and I think the mushrooms will spread on their own too. So moving on, last and definitely not least today, I think it would be cool to have a food source inside of the nether of. Now, uh, food source inside of the nether hub this is going to be a little bit tricky because if we think about food options that we can actually, like, let's say grow inside of the nether, we don't have many, but we do have one very, very interesting one. I was thinking about maybe building this machine or a, a couple of these machines over here. Oh my, have we hit the basalt uh, nether wastes? Um, hmm, we haven't hit the basalt delta, but oh. We have. <laughs> That's so cool. Anyways, machines. I was thinking about building a brand new machine over here. Uh, maybe like lining them against the wall over here looking inward. These machines will take up a little bit of space. They'll be like four deep. So I think we dig the wall back like quite a bit here. I think the dimensions of this next machine is like four by four. So let's say I had a one machine right there. I could go down and do another one right over. Excuse me, sir. Another one right over there. That'll be two. And then finally, I could do one more right over here. But... That kind of gets a little bit close to this spot, right? So maybe I bump it down like two blocks or something and we should be good. Machines, machines. When it comes to machines, here's what I've got. We'll set the machines back here. And then what I want to try and do is make the middle of the machine line up with this spot right there. By putting a chest right there, we're going to be golden move over here and do it again right there and i think what we'll do is we'll start with just these two tiles then we'll go from there these machines at least in the beginning are kind of iron and wood eaters but i think it'll be worth it we're gonna want to start with a configuration of hoppers just like this in the ground we're gonna have one chest right there that's gonna be the output chest and then hoppers going all the way into that taking a look at what i got going already though i i'm gonna have extra space so let me move it all back and you know what? For the heck of it, why not? Let's commit to that machine vibe. We'll raise the machines up off of the ground too. Thinking about it now, because I don't fully plan on like heavily relying on this food source, maybe just the two tiles will be fine. 
food inside of the nether. Is it possible? Well, yes, it definitely is possible. It's not efficient, but possible. Next up, for our machine that we're going to build, the best farming block of all of Minecraft 1.19. We're going to put mud in this farm in the corners. The mud is going to be basically where we'll be growing our crop on. Now, usually in the overworld, we will put water in the middle, but this isn't the overworld. Instead, what we'll do is we'll just put a solid block, and then it's time for dirt. Now, uh, for this next part, we need to be quick. We can actually grow melons and pumpkins inside of the nether as long as we're quick. So we till this and then plant that and then bone meal it up a little bit. I don't think that will ever, like, go away. It's not going to be efficient. It's really, really not. But it will work. Now, just in case, uh, maybe something changed. I don't know. It's been a while since I've done it. <laughs> what I decided to do is only bring four melon seeds. I figured what I could do is bone meal those things, let them grow up. I take the melons from the farm. I turn those melons into seeds. And then there we go. Tile number two. So the question here is efficiency. Do I think I need to expand it more? I could build one more tile right there. I could build another right there. I think it would be nice, but looking at this base over here, I'd like to leave enough room by this uh, this ladder right there to set up a proper room uh, soon. So I think we'll leave it at two tiles. It should be fine. Next up, so I can get rid of the ugly torch and make sure these things never go away and also speed them up a little bit with some light. There we go. Pistons. We will use pistons to reap in the harvest, the profit of this farm. And I think on this other side, even though I don't have the plants in quite yet, it shouldn't be a problem. I'll be able to reach the plants, so might as well build that one, too. And uh, finally, already, last and definitely not least, we'll go ahead and get rid of these blocks, move around on top of this thing, and place observers facing down. With the observers looking down at the stems, always, as soon as something happens, um, excuse me. <laughs> as soon as something happens, we'll know. We'll carry the signal over with a little bit of redstone. And there we go. World's most compact melon farm. Maybe best one, too. And also, nether crop farm. It's perfect. With the hoppers down there, every single drop will be picked up and put into the chest. Now I just need to, uh, maybe make it look a little bit better. <laughs> it could use some work. Step one in this process today involved a little bit of blackstone. I was thinking that maybe a blackstone base behind the farm could make the farm like really pop and stand out. I also think blackstone looks pretty sweet. As a side note, I'm actually really excited that the nether hub, at least in this corner of it, is finally reaching the basalt delta biome. With it reaching into the basalt delta biome, I mean, guess it doesn't change much, but when I'm taking out space, maybe I'll get like basalt instead. That's at least a little bit more useful. So with the moody blackstone backdrop set up for this farm, it was time to design the rest of the room around the farms that I'm now realizing I placed really far back. <laughs> uh, whoops. At this point, multiple episodes in in our nether hub build project, we kind of actually have a theme going, and I'm really, really loving it. It's got lots of basalt all over the place and a little bit of deep sleep, creating this absolutely brutalist feel. It only makes sense we continue it here. In the other room that we worked on today, we did something cool with the ceiling, a basalt bedrock combination. I really liked that. I figured for this room, we would do something very, very similar, but a little bit different. Instead of plain old basalt, we'll try smooth basalt. We were in the home stretch of the project today. Everything was going fine, beautifully even, until I realized that I did something wrong with the lava over here. I couldn't figure out exactly what the problem was, so I picked up the lava bucket and placed it back down. By picking it up and placing it back down, it seemed to fix the problem, whatever it was. Just before I was about to finish the entire project, it clicked. Uh, I completely forgot about moving the light over to let the mushrooms grow even more. I'm pretty sure mushrooms will only spread in the dark, right? Uh, maybe. And then I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. The very first melon harvest of the farm. And actually, that yielded us way more than enough for the other farm. In our farming room, I was about to lay nether bricks all over the floor, but then I realized, because it goes to the nether fortress, I might make the room next door, not a nether bricks. I needed something else. Admittedly, coming up with something else was actually pretty easy. I was actually super confident that I had it figured out until I realized 
Oh god. <laughs> oh no. I've done it again. I didn't even think about it. Uh, we now have not one, not two, <laughs> but three rooms with checkered floors. Uh, all different checkered floors, but three checkered floor rooms in a row. <laughs> I promise I won't do it again. For our very final room today, there is a lot that I can't really finish. This room over here, it might transition into something really, really cool. Right behind us, I almost think it could be sweet to build a bridge going over another highway. For now, for today, we now officially have a food source inside of the nether. We've got a simple, renewable space for mushrooms, also inside of the nether. And then maybe most importantly and almost favoritely today, we also have an automatic respawn machine inside of the nether. I absolutely love how the nether hub is turning out. What do you think? Let me know down below. And if you haven't yet, smash the like, subscribe. It helps me out. Big thank you to my patron, Medical Boomstick, for the support. Thank you all for watching. It's been me, Waddles. Next up, if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend that armor trim snapshot. It's amazing. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.